Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Confidence Intervals Part 3 Please watch our previous videos on confidence interval before watching this video for better viewing experience. Confidence intervals part 1 Confidence interval of mean when sigma is known and part 2 Confidence interval of population mean when sigma is not known using t distribution. Now in this video we will explain how to estimate confidence interval for proportion and how to estimate confidence interval for standard deviation. Let us now discuss confidence interval for population proportion. We can estimate confidence interval for proportion using normal approximation to binomial distribution if the sample size n is sufficiently large. Normal approximation to binomial uses standard deviation using binomial distribution. If you are not familiar with binomial distribution, please watch our video on this subject. Link is mentioned in the description of the video. Now let us look at some statistics of binomial distribution. Average of binomial distribution is NP and standard deviation is square root of NPQ. For example, let us imagine that a coaching class prepares students for a competitive exam. Past data shows that about 40% students get selected in the competitive exam. The expected number of students getting selected in a batch of 30 students will be NP is equal to 30 into 0.4 that is equal to 12. This number of students will vary with a standard deviation of square root of NPQ which is square root of 30 into 0.4 into 0.6 which is 2.68 from batch to batch of the same size that is batch size of 30. Let us now see how to calculate confidence interval for proportion. Let p cap be the sample proportion which equals x upon n where x is the number of events in the sample of size n. Then the confidence interval for proportion can be estimated using the following formula. And that confidence interval equals p cap plus or minus z alpha by 2 which comes from the standard normal distribution into square root of p cap into 1 minus p cap upon n. So this term square root of p cap into 1 minus p cap upon n comes from binomial distribution where the factor z alpha by 2 depends upon the confidence level. Consider the following example. A zero survey of 2176 children was conducted in Mumbai city in June 21 for presence of antibodies to COVID-19 virus. The survey showed that 51.18% children had such antibodies. What is the confidence interval for antibodies in the children from Mumbai? Assume confidence level of 95%. Source of this information is Times of India, 29 June 2021. We will now illustrate how to calculate confidence interval for proportion in this particular example. The proportion is given as 0.5118 with sample size of 2176. The value of z alpha by 2 is equal to 1.96 for 95% confidence level and alpha risk of 5% distributed on both tails. We have already illustrated how to estimate this value of z alpha by 2 in our previous video on confidence interval part 1. Therefore, the confidence interval for proportion can be estimated as sample proportion plus or minus z alpha by 2 square root of proportion into 1 minus proportion upon sample size. Substituting the values, we can easily get this as lower bound 0.491 and upper bound as 0.533. That is, you can say 
49.1% to 53.3%. So while the proportion in the sample was 51.18, it could be as low as 49.1 or as high as 53.3 in the city of Bombay for the children. We will now illustrate use of template created by Institute of Quality and Reliability. You can contact us by logging into this website www.world-class-quality.com and send a mail by clicking on contact us. Alternately, the email ID is already mentioned here. You can write to us on this email to get this template. As explained in our previous video confidence interval part 2, this has got three worksheets. Confidence interval for mean, standard deviation and proportion. So we are using the third template that is for proportion. The sample size is 2176. Template shows number of defectives, but we can consider it as number of events in this particular case. Number of defectives we will have to estimate using the proportion given. So it works out to be 1114. Let us double check whether the proportion is correct. Yes, it is correct. And alpha risk is 5% distributed on both tails. And you can immediately see that the upper and lower confidence interval values of proportion are 0.533 and 0.491. This matches with our values calculated earlier. Now let us see how to calculate confidence interval for population standard deviation when we know sample standard deviation with sample size n. We can calculate confidence interval for standard deviation using chi-square distribution. Watch our following videos on the subject if you want to understand chi-square distribution. There are two videos, one on the basic concepts of chi-square distribution and the second one chi-square test one variance. Links to these videos are provided in the description of this video. Let us now go into specific details of calculations. Let S be the sample standard deviation and N be the sample size. The degrees of freedom then will be N minus 1. Confidence interval for population standard deviation sigma will be given by this formula. The formula shows square root of N minus 1 S square divided by chi square alpha by 2 N minus 1. This gives you the lower bound. And the right side of this formula shows square root of n minus 1 into s square upon chi square 1 minus alpha by 2 into n minus 1. And this will give the upper bound of the confidence interval. Let us see an application example of confidence interval for standard deviation. A pizza company delivers pizzas with mean of 33 minutes and standard deviation of 4 minutes. Their Six Sigma team claims that an improved process was piloted for 26 pizza deliveries and they could achieve standard deviation of 3 minutes. What is the confidence interval for new standard deviation assuming alpha risk of 5%? So confidence interval for population deviation sigma, we have seen the formula. Here alpha is equal to 0 0.05, alpha by 2 is equal to 0 0.025 and therefore 1 minus alpha by 2 would be 0. 975. This is the table for chi-square distribution for confidence interval of population standard deviation sigma. For 0 0.025 alpha by 2, the chi-square value for 25 degrees of freedom is given as 40.646 and for 0 0.975 the chi-square distribution value for 25 degrees of freedom is 13.12. So if we use these two values in the formula, we get confidence interval of 2.353 and 4.141. So the population sigma would range between these two values with 95% probability. So there is a 5% chance that the actual value of population standard deviation sigma would go beyond these two values either on the right side or left side. Again, we can use the template from Institute of Quality and Reliability and you can request for this template at this email address. But now this time, 
we select the standard deviation worksheet and here we have to put the data sample standard deviation s is 3 sample size is 26 and alpha risk is 5 percent and we get the same values of the confidence interval thanks for watching this video hope you found it worth watching please subscribe to institute of quality and reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on reliability engineering six sigma and statistical quality control click the subscribe and bell icon for getting intimations on the future videos.